September 2015. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kate Daniels. Hiya, Kate. Hiya, Wayne. I'm telling you, we just move along. Today is Wednesday, middle of the week already, the 16th of September. Moving along very quickly. Before you know it, it'll be fall. The next thing you know, we'll be wishing each other a happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas. Happy That's New right. Year. That's right. That's right. There you go. Line by. Today, the 16th of September, let's make a quick note of today is a special day if you're a rock collector. I don't mean rock and roll. I mean just plain old rock. rocks. Co today is Collect Rocks Day. Okay. I know what I'm doing when I get off work. <laughs> Today is also American Legion Day. Very now nice. that's special. It Thank is. you very much. Uh, it's also Step Family Day, Mayflower Day, National Play-Doh Day. You ever play with Play-Doh? I do. You know, I have a, a three and a just turned five-year-old. Oh, And I'm, yeah, I'm not right. a fan of Play-Doh in the house. Uh, is that right? I'm one of those moms. Uh, I'm so like, let's take it outside. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Play-Doh is wonderful. Well, you know, when Play-Doh was first invented, it was invented as a wallpaper cleaner. Really? Yes. And then people stopped using wallpaper back in the whenever it was invented. Uh, they didn't use it as much, so sales were not great. So one of the, the people with the company that invented Play-Doh said, let's find something else to do with this stuff. So they did. They made a toy out of it, and it became extremely popular, as you well know. That is wild. Yeah. How well, why not take a touch of offense about the wallpaper. I happen to love wallpaper. Oh, well, there you go. Yes. There you go. Might have to borrow some Play-Doh and clean it. <laughs> <laughs> it's also Working Parents Day today, 16th <laughs> of September, special day. All right, plus it's the first day of the second half of the month. Just thought I'd throw that throw in there. Throw that out there. I just, why not? Okay. All right, uh, let's see now. Tomorrow is Constitution Day, and at Wayne Community College, you're going to have special event. Judge Erica James will be speaking in Moffitt Auditorium. That begins at 11 a.m. Also tomorrow at the college and the atrium there, they're going to have a uh, voter registration drive in the atrium of the Learning Center. Uh, they're going to have citizenship posters on display. They're going to have refreshments served by Wayne Community College Students Government Association at 9, at 10, and at noon in the seminar room, which is room 161, there will be a mock citizenship quiz. Now, you think you know <laughs> all about America and you could easily pass this citizenship test? Let me tell you something. I want you to just to try and just see how you do. It doesn't cost you anything and it doesn't count for points or anything like that, but just go and see how you do with a citizenship test. Okay? Okay, check it out. Uh, also, on uh, September 30th at the college, they're going to have a safety fair for students and employees of the college beginning at 10 going to 1 in the Learning Center wrapping up National Campus Safety Month and National Preparedness Month at least two dozen vendors and activities on hand September 30th at Wayne Community College very nice there you go very nice all right so on the on the 17th so tomorrow when everyone leaves Wayne Community College mm -hmm. make sure you get in your nominations for the Duke Citizenship Award Contact the chamber for that information. Yes. It is the deadline the tomorrow. The deadline is tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, we want you to join us for Business After Hours from 5.30 to 7 with our friends at, um, at the museum downtown on William Street. You know, uh, Chris Lawson and, and, and Brantley Parton, uh, they just, they're just two amazing guys. They are amazing. They do wonderful work at the museum. And they know a little bit about history, don't they? I am telling you, uh, Chris is practically a walking encyclopedia. Yeah. He, yeah. he really is, and they, they were real <coughs> fortunate for um, the history and the wealth of knowledge that they bring yeah. into our community. They have a lot of great community partners, um, a lot mm -hmm. of collaborative partners in the community, and um, it is how often we all forget the resources that are right here in our own backyard. That's exactly so, right. Um, you know, come out. If you've not been to the museum in a long time, um, or if you were just there, I promise you the next time you go, you're going to see and learn something new. So join us for Business After Hours tomorrow night. That is so true. And uh, our hat's off to the, uh, the uh, Historical Association here in Wayne County. They just, uh, they, they just got it all together. They did. My timer died. Your timer? <laughs> don't <laughs> tell anybody. Uh, it's a secret. Don't, you didn't hear that. Okay, don't forget the farmer's market today. Yes. Underway at 8 o'clock this morning, going until 6 this afternoon. The uh, back to school uh, thing. I'll try to clarify what thing. 
Oh, back to school cash. Back to school cash. Yes. Yes, back to school cash. <laughs> what is that exactly? I'm tinkling over here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't like it when people say, I told you so, but <laughs> you, you did, you did. You tried to tell me Wayne I wouldn't listen. I was trying listen. to be cute and setting a timer, and I said, that thing's going to go off, don't no, you know? No, it's not going to go off. No. Okay, uh, what is, let me help uh, you. Help me friend. out here. Back I need all the help I can get. Could you Where use some extra back-to-school cash? <laughs> <laughs> Here's your chance. Here's your chance. This is to help support the cures for the colors. What so she said. We are kidding right now, but in all seriousness, it is quite amazing what Dr. Adkins is doing for cures for the colors. It is. Um, not sure what year this is of him going into this, um, and I cannot tell you how many um, hundreds of families that this man has helped, but the money raised for this is not going for, um, you know, the much needed funds to, um, for research for cancer. Mm -hmm. The funds for this are helping the family members and the patients go and get this care with gas cards, That's right. food cards. So, you know, all the things, it helps lessen the burden um, while these individuals, young and old, are um, in the fight of their life. People are often faced with making a choice between either sure. putting food on the table or going to the doctor. That's right. One or the other, and they right. can't afford to do both. And many times they're in, they make a decision that they, that they have to make. That's right. So this certainly helps them out. It is. So you'll hear more about that. Um, let's see. Your tickets must be purchased by tomorrow, so by the 17th. So contact... Um, their College for a Cure has a, uh, a website, or you can contact the chamber, and we'll help hook you up with that information. That chamber number, what's that chamber number? 734-2241. 734-2241. Okay. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll do our interviews. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television, in the heart of Goldsboro, in the heart of Wayne County. Our guest today is Chris Estes. Christopher Estes is with Steel Memorial Library. How you doing, bud? All right, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good to see you. What do you do at the library? Um, well, recently I applied for a grant uh, from the National Endowment for the Humanities mm -hmm. and the American Library Association. Mm -hmm. There were uh, 200 grants offered, um, a little bit more than 200, mm -hmm. and over 300 people applied for it, and our library was one of the uh, libraries that received the grant. Well, congratulations. Yes, That's wonderful. You. But now, first of all, uh, you are a reference librarian and tech yes. services yes, librarian person. Yes, I am. I, uh, I work part-time in technical service, which is basically cataloging and uh, repairing books and getting books ready to go on the shelf. And then uh, the rest of the time I work in the reference, um, doing teen programs, adult programs, um, and pretty much offering help to anyone who might need okay, assistance. Okay, I'm going I'm to throw you a curve here. Now, we hadn't planned on talking about this, but there's a move afoot. A move, to, of a move afoot to get rid of the Dewey Decimal System. Why in the world would anyone want to get rid of the Dewey Decimal System? Um, I don't know either. <laughs> I mean, it's just, that's not makes sense at all to me, and I'm against it. Well, uh, yeah. So there. <laughs> <laughs> in, um, in a lot of academic libraries, they actually don't, don't even use the Dewey Decimal System. Really? They use the Library of Con Congress cataloging system. Oh, what do they know? <laughs> Nothing. I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. All right. Now so. back to the point. <laughs> You're here because to, to talk to us about this grant. Now you applied. Yes. To who wrote the grant? Did you write it? Yeah, I wrote the grant. My goodness. Yes, so. it was. Uh, <laughs> that was a fun process, actually. Oh, what? Uh, more fun than planning it. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of words besides fun in writing grants, but yeah. but uh, so uh, now so you wrote the grant. And you were, and there were, you said over 300 people had applied for it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mount Olive's uh, Steel Memorial Library actually received a grant. Yes, we did. Yeah. And there were a few more in North Carolina, I think um, Wilmington, Durham County. Um, I can't remember the other ones, but mm -hmm. those were two of the ones that actually um, received the grant in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy about it. I'm excited to be, you know, bringing this to Goldsboro and uh, Steel in Mount Olive and Wayne County because, you know, we do have a growing population of Latino Americans, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's important to, to bring that topic. So what will the grant do? Um, well, they, they gave us $3,000 to promote Latino American history, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just in America, but um, part of my program is going to focus on Wayne County. Okay. Um, I've got 
two programs that are going to be screening episodes of the PBS documentary Latino Americans 500 Years of History. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of them is going to focus on world, the Latino contribution to World War II, and, um, and it's going to also focus on how they were treated when they came home from the war, okay. and um, how it was different than other war heroes. So, so we're talking about the mid-40s here. Yes, that one's going to be in the 40s. Things were a little different then than they yes, are now. a lot different. Yeah. And uh, they, well, the documentary series itself spans from the 1600s to present. Wow. So um, okay. I had to pick two episodes to focus on. So mm -hmm. that is the first one. The second one is called Peril and Promise, and it's about the Latino movement in the late 80s, 90s. And it focuses on um, this, the surge of immigration from Cuba and uh, Puerto Rico. And Which it also included the Mariel boat lift, of course. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's one that comes to mind. Everybody thinks of that first. And, and how um, dangerous that was. Yeah. And it's going to talk about, um, in I believe Miami, they had, uh, they made the city bilingual and there was a backlash about that. So it's yeah. going to talk about that. Yeah. And it's also going to talk about uh, border issues. And, and it's going to be um, intended to start a discussion, you know, about issues that are still current and important. Yeah. So, so, so Chris, when, are, when, are all these, when does this take place? Um, the first one is September 26th. The 26th? What yeah. day of the week is that? Do you recall? It's a Saturday. Saturday. Yes. Saturday. They're all on Saturday. Okay. Um, and I've spread them out from this month until March of next year. Wow. So there's going to be one every couple of months. Okay. And um, the, uh, the second two programs, we have uh, a couple of people from Wayne County, Lewis Cruz and Brenda Nuncio. Yes. Um, Lewis and who was the second person? Brenda Nuncio. Okay. Uh, Lewis works with the NC Cooperative Extension, right. working with farm workers, health and safety. And then Brenda works with the Juntos program, which is uh, for Latino youth, mm -hmm. helping them uh, get involved and learn to uh, work in the, the new culture that they're coming into. All right. So um, they're going to talk about, they both came over here from Mexico, and so they're going to talk about their trip over and how they have you know, changed and grown here and how they're uh, giving to the Wayne County community. Mm -hmm. And then the last program is going to be a cultural festival. Um, we're gonna have two dance troops come and perform. Um, Southern Wayne uh, Club Latino has a, a group that performs a dance. Do they? Yes, and, um, and then the second one, I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this right, but I'm gonna try. It's the Ballet de Colores Folklorico. Oh, that sounds right to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, really. I <laughs> yeah. Um, I've tried it several times, and it's a, it's a tongue twister. It is. So. It is. Oh, you did but, fine. <laughs> but they're going to come and uh, do a performance. And um, I saw kind of a preview at the Farm Workers Festival this past Sunday, mm -hmm. and their, their costumes are amazing. Oh, yeah. So. Lots of color. Yes. Lots of uh, lots of movement, lots of yeehaw. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be That's great. Great. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it, and yeah. um, I want to uh, to bring in all different kinds of people to this. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want it to be a learning experience to see how this culture, you know, is a, is affecting Wayne County in a good way. Yeah, and um, to learn about you know the different history behind these you know so everybody's invited to attend yes it's an informational event yes it's free and open to the public come one come all yes free <laughs> and it's free of course it's at the library it's, it's free. at the library it's free. <laughs> everything at the library is free exactly so you should get your library card if you don't have one that's exactly how, <laughs> how do you do that uh, just come to the library with a current ID and um, as long as you live in Wayne County, we'll just get you a library card. That's all you have to do is come with your current ID. If you don't have a current ID, bring your ID with a piece of mail that has your current address okay. on it. You'll find a way to work it all out for us. Yes. All right. We want you to use our library. Yes. It's very important. And it's practically a new library, and it's one of the, one of the it's a beautiful facility. Yes. It's and it's uh, it's just fantastic. I know you enjoy working there. It is. It's um, if anyone who's been to the old Mount Olive Library has yeah. seen. Yeah. It's this one is amazing. It's probably like four times as big as the old library, yeah. and it's just beautiful and. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't been yet, you should definitely come. <laughs> Christopher Estes, what's your phone number there? 919-299-8105. Um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it's just like it is on the screen there. 
I can't see it, but I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> Just like it is on the screen there. It's right. Okay. 299-8105. Yes. That's an area code 919, of course. Yes. All right. And uh, my extension is 8012 if you want to talk to me. Okay. So. All right. Christopher, thank you so much for being with us. Chris Estes is a, uh, is a person of many talents with Steel okay. Memorial Library, <laughs> right? All right. I like thank to think so. I like to think so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ta da! Yay! Yay. <laughs> awesome. Isn't he good? good? He did a good job. Thanks for watching. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television, in the heart of Goldsboro, in the heart of Wayne County. Our guest today is Matt Whittle. And a lot of people around Goldsboro know Matt, but Matt, you got a brand new position, a new yes, job. Yes, sir, absolutely. All right, what are you doing now? Uh, the new executive director at uh, Habitat for Humanity of uh, Goldsboro Wayne. Get out of here! Yes, Man, sir. that's great. It's Congratulations, by the way. It. Appreciate it. And I'm glad you're here. Me too. Uh, so there's a, a, a people who uh, have heard of Habitat mm -hmm. for Humanity. Right. The office has been here in Goldsboro for a number of years, mm -hmm. uh, right over here on Walnut Street. And, uh, and then you have the ReStore, of course. Of course. But uh, we want to tell people there, who may have lived in the cave for the last 20 years what Habitat is. So what is Habitat for Humanity? Uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, basically, it, it's a, a program and organization that works to get uh, low to moderate income uh, families uh, into homes. We want, we want to create more homeowners. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's, there's a, a process folks have to go through. Uh, the famous saying is it's, it's not a, a handout, it's a hand up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's exactly what Habitat is. Uh, we, we sell the homes uh, to potential homeowners. Um, mm -hmm. but, but our goal is to, uh, to get folks out of substandard housing and to get them into homes of their own. And it's that simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. Now this is not as many people think, a giveaway charity type program is nothing like that. Absolutely. Uh, however, uh, the people who do buy these homes, and they have to buy them, mm -hmm. uh, have to go through a, a strict regimen of qualifying. Right. Uh, so tell me about that. So, okay. so how so, does somebody get a home? Uh, the, the, fir the first step uh, is to come, you can either come into our office and get a, a pre-application, uh, or you can get on our, on our website, uh, goldsboroughabitat.org. Um, and that is basically just your basic information, and that uh, lets us look at uh, uh, credit uh, and those sorts of things, uh, uh, basic income information, uh, to determine if, if you meet certain, certain uh, levels. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do, uh, then we give you a full application package. Um, and, and we uh, give, out a, give out a number of those. We have a number of people come by, pick up those, uh, those pre-application packages, mm -hmm. and then come back uh, for, for the full packages. Um, but like you said, not everybody uh, that qualifies. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not a handout, it's a hand up, as, right. we, as we said. Um, and we want to make sure that folks, when they buy these houses, uh, that they're able to stay in these houses. And that's the whole goal, is it, to not just put folks in houses, yeah. but to make sure that, that they can be a sustainable homeowner. So they need to, to have workable credit. Uh, they need to, uh, to have certain, uh, fall within certain income uh, guidelines. Um, they need to have uh, a, a debt to income ratio uh, that allows them to take on a mortgage payment. And these are folks and families, and I, I stress the term families. Absolutely. These are families who, over time, for one reason or another, have fallen on hard times mm -hmm. or whatever the reason. But the point is that they have to qualify, they have to uh, make payments just like anybody else. Exactly. They have to put in sweat equity. Mm -hmm to help build their own home and then help build others. All right, uh, 300 hours of sweat equity uh, to, uh, to qualify uh, before they can even uh, be an official uh, part. Uh, once, once they're accepted by the board mm -hmm. um, as, as a potential homeowner, uh, they have uh, a, a, a short window of time. They have to get 50 hours in uh, to even be able to go through the process of getting their next 250 hours. All right, and then once they get their house, they have to keep it up keep everything above their homeowner. They're homeowner. They're homeowner. Uh, they pay their mortgage. That's right. Um, and, and we provide a, a zero interest loans. Um, so uh, so it, it's a very affordable mortgage, but right. it is a mortgage nonetheless. Right. And uh, again, it's, uh, they have to qualify. They have to make payments. They have to have an income. They have to have a job. They have to have Absolutely. all this. Um, and, and as you mentioned, it's a zero percent interest rate. Mm -hmm. That's where that's where you're able to help people. Right. We, keep we, the payments down. We, and, and we build our homes uh, or, or sell our homes at cost. So uh, if a home uh, costs us uh, $92,000 uh, to build, mm -hmm. uh, we sell it uh, 
add cost. Uh, we're, we don't make a profit off the homes like uh, like, like other like company like a well, traditional private company would. Right. Um, and traditionally, the homes appraise uh, well over what we actually mm -hmm. are able to sell them for. All right. But now, I also want to stress. Leah Daniels was in a month or so ago, and I asked Leah directly. I said, mm -hmm. "How many houses have you foreclosed on?" Mm -hmm. And you tell me. Um, you put me on the spot here because this is still being new. I, well, I, I know, I know, I know, right. I know, and I didn't no, mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, but let sorry. me tell you. Sure. I, I'll just, tell you. I know exactly how many. None. None. Zero. Goose egg. You have not foreclosed on any houses, and I think you're on house number what? I believe we're about to uh, to close on house number uh, 68 or 69. Okay. 68 or 69 families in brand new homes, they're making the payments on them, they're keeping their houses up, and they have foreclosed on none in spite of the fact that we have been through some hard times mm -hmm. here. Uh, America will go have plus or minus uh, times of economic uh, distress and at times uh, economic problems, but these families have all kept their, their, their payments. You have, uh, no one's been foreclosed on. These are families that are taking care of their business. They're taking care of their, their we, we, we do our best to make sure that when families enter the program uh, that they understand uh, what needs to be done and, and, and that they're able to uh, to maintain their homes, able to keep their homes. That's exactly right. All right, now, uh, we've told people uh, what they need to do mm -hmm. if they are interested in perhaps acquiring a Habitat home. Absolutely. So how do we contact you? Uh, like I said, the, the best ways to get hold of us are, um, you get our, if you're interested in being, being a volunteer, mm -hmm. um, interested in being a, a homeowner, mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested in, uh, in working with Habitat anyway, uh, you can reach us through the website. There, uh, there are forms to fill out on the website. Uh -huh. um, you can give us a call at the office. Uh, that number is 736-9592. Uh, okay. Um, or you could uh, get email us. Uh, and uh, again, all, those, all that contact information, I won't rattle off a list of email addresses, but all that's on the website. On the website. Also, the Restore, which is an amazing Restore place. Restore is a, a, a great part of what we do. Man, I'm telling you, that is a great place because we, you have not only people donating to Restore mm -hmm. for resale of items, right. but you have businesses in Wayne County who will donate goods from their stores, from their own businesses, mm -hmm. to Restore to help people out. And these items are resold. So you, you could go into the Restore on Mulberry Street and find a brand new sofa that's never been used. Mm -hmm. You can find brand new windows. You can find uh, building materials. You find all kinds of books, hundreds of books. Uh, the, the Restore, it, it, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great resource for, for, for do-it-yourselfers. Um, it's a great resource for people looking to, to like I said, pick up a, a, a new book or two sure. to, to, to remodel the, yeah. uh, the, the, their, their, their living room, their, yeah. their kitchen, their bathroom. Uh, up, upstairs, there, there are sinks, there's cabinets, there's, uh, there's, there's there's a lot more than what people, I think, realize yeah. uh, to those two stories. That's exactly right. So we encourage you to head over to the Restore, which is near City Hall. It's on Mulberry Street. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and just, just check it out. And if you have any questions at all about Habitat for Humanity, yes, sir. call Matt or call and talk to whoever who answers the phone. And whoever answers the phone, I'm go more to, than happy to, uh, to help. And, 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 and if I have time, uh, one thing I, w I do want to plug, uh, we have our faith, uh, interfaith build coming up. Oh, um, so that's a, a cooperation of, uh, of churches. Yeah, uh, we ask churches to come together uh, to help sponsor a house, and uh, and, and essentially the, the churches uh, build that house. Uh, they have work days. They they commit a, a certain uh, funding level. Um, and our goal every year, uh, we'd love to get twelve churches if we can. Yeah. Uh, typically, we get uh, six to seven ch partner churches. Um, so we're working on that this year. That uh, we don't have a date uh, identified. Uh, we're still working on identifying the site and the family and, right. and the kickoff date. But that'll be coming up in the fall. So, uh, so we're busy contacting churches about that now. And if anybody has a church that uh, might be interested in partnering uh, like that, uh, again, that contact information is on the website. Uh, give us a call. Uh, shoot us an email. Uh, we we want to work with the community. Excellent. That is exciting, and that's coming up soon. And you get all that information on their website, goldsboroughabitat.org. Matt, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank Matt, you. Matt Whittle, with whom I have thrown all kinds of hard questions. <laughs> Great it job. I, I'm, I appreciate uh, Congratulations it. on uh, your Habitat position. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm excited about yeah. it. It's a great organization. Yeah. We got a, there's a lot to do in Wayne County, and we're, we're ready to do it. No question about it. And thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Your source for what's happening in your community is Wayne Goldsboro Television. We are back. <laughs> We are. <laughs> we are back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Thank you for being with us. This show airs every day, Monday through, well, not this show. We do a new one every day. <laughs> Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. It repeats at noon o'clock and then again at 5.30 in the p.m. Then on Saturday and Sunday, the whole week repeats, all right, beginning at early morning and finishing up whenever it's finished. 
I have no idea what I just said. Read my lips. I love your timeline. <laughs> I'm gonna Thank you. Use that for the rest of the day. I'll be done. There you point. go. Um, okay. The Arts Council of Wayne County is calling out all artists. Yes. Artists. 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 Uh, to enter the first ever plain air paint out. Say that three times fast. Plain air paint out. Oh, good. Plain air paint out. One more air time. paint out. On October 17th, a month away, artists from near and far will gather in historic downtown Goldsboro for the first ever plain uh, air paint out. I guess that's how you say that. P L E I N. I hope so, because that's what we said last week. We hadn't, we hadn't been told otherwise, but Plain, this is plan. a neat event. Arts Council is proud to host this event during this beautiful time of year. Enjoy easy access to historical homes and monuments. Well, wow. Also access to unique architectural features and one-of-a-kind sculptures. This non-juried event not only provides opportunities to emerging artists, but also attracts the seasoned professionals. I like that. I do too. I am a seasoned citizen, so I can relate to all that, you know. <laughs> all artwork must be completed in the downtown area. A map will be provided. The Plain Art Paintout is open to artists, all artists over 18, 18 and over. Uh, entry fee is 20 bucks per artist. All works must be for sale and can be done in the artist's choice of media. Uh, canvases will be stamped with an approved insignia on October 17th at 8 a.m. All right, so if you have questions about that, you can call the Arts Council at 919-736-3300, 919-736-3300, or go to artsinwayne.org. There you go. There you go. You there heard you go. it here, folks. There you go. All right, what's next? Well, you know, we, we put a little plug in last week for this, and I think it's important to share again. Uh, there's been a, a lot of talk about this in the state of North Carolina. Um, that Governor Pat McCrory recently announced the impact that tourism has on the state as a whole. Yeah. Now what this means for you all watching at home is in Wayne County, okay, ready? Domestic visitors to and within Wayne County spent $151.26 million in 2014. Whoa. This is an increase of 2.6% from 2013. It is incredible what's happening in Wayne County. Um, Betsy Roseman, you know, we, we sing her praises as often as we can. Mm -hmm. um, she is over travel and tourism for the county. Mm -hmm. She is an employee of the city of Goldsboro, but she is working to promote all of Wayne County. So all the things that she's working on throughout the year, um, it's not just planning an event that's going to be three months out right. or six months out. Right. She's looking at four to five years out. All right. And her goal is to pull in people into Wayne County to fill up our hotels so that, um, you know, all these people from outside of Wayne County will stay in our hotels. They're going to mm -hmm. eat in your restaurants, they're going right. to shop in your stores. It is a beautiful, beautiful cycle. And they're going to leave so all that money here. They're going to leave all that money here. Wow. So it is, it's a, it's a big part of Wayne County. Yeah. I can honestly say that five years ago, I wouldn't have realized how big it is. Um, so this may come as news to you, um, what all is going on, but there's, Two events just this month that are that Wayne County is the host of. So keep your eyes and ears tuned to it. Um, but that was big news out of Raleigh. Um, big picture, of course, was looking at the state. Mm -hmm. What do we want to know about? We want to know wonderful. what is Wayne County doing to contribute to the overall state economic impact, and what does it mean for our own home? Travel and tourism alone, 121 plus million dollars. That's right. Wow, and over and a it, thousand jobs. It directly employs a thousand jobs. Wow. A thousand people. One thousand. Yeah. Wow. Way to go, Pretty Betsy. Impressive. And way to go to all the people in the travel and tourism That's industry right. here in Wayne County. That's right. All right. Way to go. We're out of time. We've got to do this again tomorrow. Maybe I'll get it right then. I'll work on it overnight while I'm sleeping. Yeah, right. Anyway, join us again tomorrow. We'll be right here at 7 a.m. as we bring you this program, Wayne Goldsboro Television. Until tomorrow, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kate Daniels. Have a great day.